Have you ever wanted to wire up some extra reverse lights, but um, you want them to come on automatically when you put the vehicle in reverse, but you would also like to be able to control them separately? Well, today I'm gonna to show you how to do that. How to wire to video. How to make your own. How to make your own part top part. How to change the oil. How to fix the light problems. How to install. How to do a complete tune-up. I'm gonna show you how to do that. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to use this switch, which is a single pole, double throw rocker switch. What we're gonna do is we're gonna hook up a set of auxiliary reverse lights that will come on automatically when you put your vehicle in reverse, but then you will also be able to turn them on by themselves, or you'll be able to have them completely off to where when you put the vehicle in reverse, they don't come on. Hopefully that makes sense, that's kind of a lot. So the way we're gonna wire this switch up is if the switch is in the middle like this. You put your vehicle in reverse, your factory reverse lights come on, but the auxiliary lights that we're installing will not come on. And um, I'm not sure which way we're gonna go yet, but say you flip it one direction and then the lights will come on by themselves. You don't have to have the vehicle in reverse or anything, they'll just come on. And then if you flip it the other direction, it'll be kind of like the auto function. So as soon as you put the vehicle in reverse, they'll automatically come on with your reverse lights. We have to run not a whole lot of wiring, but just a little bit and one relay. So it's not too complicated. I'm gonna to try to make it as simple as possible. Um, I've actually had a couple people in the comments of the video for the uh, how to wire a light bar to your high beams. The, some people in the comments were asking how to do a set of reverse lights with a rocker switch. Because uh, in the other video I used a toggle switch and most people don't use like the old metal toggle switches anymore. So they wanted to know how to do it with these. I don't have any plans of actually putting any permanent reverse lights on uh, Project Renegade here. So I just made up this little rig using these little cheap lights. I'm um, an old piece of MDF that I had and uh, a little piece of two by four that's been ripped down to fit inside of the receiver or trailer hitch. And then uh, what I've done is on the back side, let me show you, is I've already connected the two lights together, the grounds and the positive. I've connected those together to where it comes out to just a single positive and negative. In this video, I'm gonna leave all of the wiring exposed so you can see every wire and you can see where it goes and you know, basically I'll explain what it does. Like I said, I wanna make this as simple as possible. So here at the back of the vehicle, you can see that we have quite a lot of wires. I've already got these ran, but I'm gonna show you where they go and what they do. These two are the power and the ground for the lights themselves. Like I said, I combined them into one power and one ground. Um, you can ground this down somewhere on the frame or whatever, but like I said, I wanted to keep all the wire exposed so you can see what everything is. Um, I have this pink wire here that's actually running up to the switch, but the main purpose of this is going to attach to our tail light back here, and I'll show you how to do that as well. We have this orange. This is going to be the power for our relay brown that's also the ground for our relay. This green wire is going to be the ground for our lights. We're going to attach that to the lights. And the blue, this also comes from our switch. It might look intimidating with, you know, just a bunch of different colors of wire and stuff, but um, we'll go up front and I'll show you what everything is hooked to on the switch. And then uh, I'll show you how to tap into your reverse lights and then uh, show you how to hook up the relay. So we're gonna hook up the switch and then um, you have a couple decisions to make when it comes to wiring up the switch. We have an orange wire. Um, it is from the battery, but you can also run this from a switched source, um, like your fuse box or somewhere that only comes on when the vehicle is on. The reason why you would want to run this off of a switched source that only comes on with the vehicle is if you hook up the ground to this switch because it has little lights that come on. So if you hook it directly to the battery, like I'm doing, these lights will actually stay on all of the time. If you have them hooked to a switch source, they'll go off when the vehicle is off, or you can just not hook the ground 
to the switch and you just won't have the lights. So you kind of have to make some decisions. So I have it ran directly from the battery and I'll show you what I'm talking about. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and hook this orange wire to pin number eight on the back of the switch. If you can see here. And I'm going to hook the ground to pin number seven and you'll see that little light just came on and I don't have the ignition or anything. Actually, I do have the ignition on, but if I were to turn it off and take the key out, you can see that that light actually stays on. The way you can solve that is you can either not run a ground to the switch, which means your switch won't light up, or you can run this orange wire to a switched source that only comes on with your key instead of directly to the battery. So you have to make your decision on that, how you wanna do it. And our remaining two wires will go to pins two and three. We're going to take our blue wire, which is the coil wire or trigger wire that goes to pin 86 on the relay. That's gonna go on this center pin here. And then our last wire, the pink wire, this is the one that's coming from the positive of your tail light. And that's gonna go on to pin number three. Now we're gonna tap into the tail lights. This is gonna be different from vehicle to vehicle. Um, so you could look up other videos on how to get to your tail light wiring for your specific vehicle. This is a 2005 Jeep Liberty. It takes a T15 Torx and just have to remove the two screws. These may have been T20s originally. I can't remember if I uh, had to use different screws when I replaced the tail lights or not. These tail lights are really easy. You just Give them a little pull and they'll unsnap. So as you can see, I've already got some stuff tied in here. This is for um, my reverse camera and stuff like that. So I already know which wire is for my reverse. I'm already actually tapped into it here, but I'll go ahead and show you again how to tap into it. I'm gonna use a T-tap. I really like using these, but you can tap in however you prefer. You want to get some pliers or something I'm going to use my strippers because they have little pliers on the end and you want to wrap this around the wire and just squeeze till it clicks and then you're spliced into that wire these come in different colors for different sizes so make sure you use the right size then our pink wire that we hooked up to the switch if you remember we added a little male terminal to the end of it and that is gonna go right into this little slot on our t-tap you may have to put some electrical tape around it because this is just the generic style of a connector that I used you should actually use one of these ones just like this one that's sealed because it covers the whole thing and then I'm gonna go ahead and put the tail light back in and I'm just gonna kind of leave the wire hanging out. Like I said, I wanna keep all of the wire out so everyone can see exactly where the wire's coming from and what it's doing. So we're gonna take our relay and the relay doesn't have to be back here in your back seat like I'm showing you. I'm just showing this so everything is out in the open like I said before. This can be underneath the hood. You can have it, you know, you know uh, behind one of the side panels in your vehicle. If you get a waterproof relay, you can put it underneath the vehicle if you want. It can pretty much go wherever you want. But now I'm just gonna show you the simple connections that we have to make. The pin numbers on these relays are pretty universal. Um, just about all relays are gonna have these same pin numbers and locations. So we're gonna take the relay just like this and then flip it straight down. You don't have to do this, but I'm just showing you so you can see the pattern and the orientation. This is pin number 30. This is going to be our power. We have an orange wire. This comes directly from the battery. This is not the same orange wire that is on the switch. These are both ran from the battery though. And that's gonna go onto pin 30. So you want direct power from your battery onto pin 30 of the relay. Pin 85 is going to be our ground. And our brown wire here is our ground. Pin 86 over here on this side 
is our coil or our trigger wire, which is blue that came from our switch. And the last connection that we need to make to the relay is going to be on pin 87, and that is the positive to our lights. So I need to put a connection on the end of this. And again, this is the positive wire coming from our lights, and it is going to go onto pin 87 of the relay. There's still no power coming from the battery or anything as of yet. The switch doesn't have power, this doesn't have power, none of it's actually hooked to the battery yet while we're hooking all this up so we don't short anything out. We have this green wire that is coming from a ground and we're gonna hook it to the ground for our lights. Now, again, you can ground these lights pretty much anywhere, like down where you have a mounted and stuff like that. But again, like I said, I just wanted to keep everything in view so you can see where everything is and what it does basically. Now, if you saw this pink wire over here, you remember that is tapped into our factory reverse positive, and that was the one that goes up and hooks to the switch. Now, all we have to do is connect our power to the battery, and this is actually done. We're up here at the battery, and like I said, I've got my ground and my power up here. You don't have to run your ground for, I don't know how many times I've said that, you don't have to run your ground all the way to your battery, but I'm just doing so so you can see, again, for the 12th time, everything that I'm doing. And now we're gonna do our positive. I've got an inline fuse on this wire and I don't have the fuse in yet. You wanna wait and put the fuse in until after you have everything connected. As you can see, I've got quite a lot of stuff connected to this battery. Okay, I'm gonna show you basically how it works so you can see everything from a little bit of a distance. As you can see, the switch is in the neutral position. If I flip it down, the reverse lights come on. They come on by themselves. And by themselves, I mean without the reverse lights or anything. If I flip the switch up in this position and go into reverse, you'll notice that the other light on the switch came on and my reverse lights and my new lights on the back are lit up. It looks kind of ridiculous. Like I said, I didn't want any permanent lights back there. That's why I have this little rig set up And if I take it out of reverse, the lights will go off, which you probably can't see. So let me go back out here. Reverse and the lights come on, park and they go off. And if I take the switch and put in the middle position, the neutral position, I can go in reverse and it's only the factory reverse lights. So that's pretty much it. That's how you wire your reverse lights to do basically multi-functions with a single pole double throw switch. Um, I'll leave a link to the switch in the description. I'm not going to leave a link to the lights in this, the description because honestly I wouldn't recommend purchasing these. Uh, I just got them for the purpose of this video. They were only 15 bucks. Um, you can research and find those yourself. I'm not going to advertise for any of those and I'm not advertising for the switch either. It's just uh, I'll, I'll leave a link for the switch so you can find this style of switch. Make sure to check out the Rocky XTV Facebook and Patreon pages. If you uh, came across this and you're not one of my subscribers, make sure to go into my channel and check out a couple other videos. I've got all kinds of different stuff in there. Um, I've got a lot of how-tos like this, a uh, complete build playlist on this vehicle, which is Project Renegade. 
a complete build list of the other vehicle you see out here, which is Project Dirty Willy. So make sure to check out a couple of those videos. If you find a video that you like, make sure to hit the like button. If you have something to say, leave it down in the comments. And if you find a couple videos that you like, don't forget to subscribe to my channel.